Be quiet yet. I know it's been a lot. It's been a very Rob heavy day. Um, well, thank you. Uh, I'm going to find out what's happening next. It's Gray and Matthew. You're throwing me off, Norton. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep it going. For Matthew some things to do now. All of a sudden it's a song about errands. I don't think I even know the words. So. <laughs> um, well, enjoy. Yes. You guys know that Gray can sing like an angel? Aww. Gray can sing like an angel. Aww. Just hear something. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, I'm crazy for feeling so lonely. I'm crazy, crazy for... Oh, I started too high. <laughs> It happens to me all the time. <laughs> that was a joke! It was a 420 friendly joke. I don't do drugs. No, I don't either. I ate Thank four you. pot brownies on accident once out of my roommate's um, refrigerator at, in college, and I think it permanently changed who I am as a person. <laughs> it took like a week to wear off. It was horrible. Anyway. Alright, next question. <laughs> You guys, my name's Matt, this is Gray. Hi guys, hi! I want you to know, we, and I'm, I'll, I'll start by just saying, yeah. s you guys are so generous. <laughs> this fandom, you're sort of like the people walking through this convention hall are really, really lovely. So thank you. I know we're not normally on the show every day. No. Uh, we've never fought demons. But uh, you guys have been great. So I've been thank married you so a few much. times, though, so I feel like it qualifies. <laughs> but thank you for having us. Um, everyone's a real asshole backstage, though, so you should know that. <laughs> Super rude. Okay, they're very lovely. Okay, so we're going to take questions, um, and here we go. Do you guys want to start over there? some of Gray's stand-up yesterday, so I think she would be down for it. You teased Porno Scooby. Let's hear it. Porno Scooby? Porno, porno Shaggy. Oh, Porno Shaggy. I don't even know what that is. Who likes them? Oh, Daphne. Oh, You're my Daphne. God. The ultimate insult. <laughs> Who like dude? Who like Scooby Doo's licking my balls? <laughs> So big. No, sorry. Right. All right. Jeepers. No, I can't see you. Jeepers. 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 <laughs> this could go on a long time. It's okay. <laughs> Neither one of us have much of a filter, and this could be really not good. Please do not put that on YouTube. We will never work again. <laughs> that wasn't a question, by the way. That was a request. Um, yes, over here. Uh, my question's for Matthew. Um, I just wanted to know what it was like to be directed by Wes Craven. Oh. Uh-oh. It was lovely. <laughs> the thing you have to know about Wes Craven is, um, he had a simple, he was a very sweet man. He was an ornithologist, so he loved the study of birds. Like he would spend days and days and days watching birds out in the woods. Um, and that's why he was sort of his imagination was so twisted, he sort of could get away with it. Um, to us, to the, fan, to, to the original Scream cast, 
he was like a father figure. Like he had us over to dinner and cared about us and loved us and we sort of helped redefine his life. I mean, he had done a lot of movies and when our movie came along, he was in need of something different and our cast sort of gave it to him. And there was never, the thing about Scream that nobody really understands is at the time, nobody expected anything out of it. So what happened is that we were off making a movie in Santa Rosa, California for three months and nobody really cared. It's just another horror movie. And so there was like this freedom in making that movie. There was this joy in making that movie that wasn't repeated on any of the other movies just because they were fine movies, but everyone had huge expectations. Pressure was really high. It was just a different cast. And so I think the great thing about that movie is that for all of us in the film and for Wes, it became this moment that sort of defined our careers. And you don't have that very often. It's transactional. I'll do a job and move on, do a job, move on, do a job, move on. And that is something you do a job and you hold those friendships for the rest of your life. So thank you for asking that question. Beautiful, thank you. I was at his funeral and I hadn't seen him in years. And I was like, oh, it's just gonna be there for the, you know, I'm just gonna be there for the rest of the crew. And I sat by myself in the DGA theater in Hollywood and sobbed like a baby. And it's amazing how you just don't expect the kind of um, impact somebody has on your life. Was, no. I'm getting weepy and I didn't even know him. No. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to bring everyone down. Scoop! Look when you're sucking! Sorry. Hi, yes. good afternoon. My question was yesterday you mentioned how you teach. Yes. Um, so my question was directed towards that. I'm a teacher too. I teach high school. I was wondering, what's your like best teaching technique? Like you know, for your students. I'm assuming you teach young adults. Uh, yeah, I teach. I do. I teach young adults. Um, I, look, I teach what I'm. I'm passionate about. I teach something I care deeply about. I love being an. I found acting when I was 14. I'm 50 years old. I I'm, I just went back to class last Monday. So I'm always in practice and I love what I do. So for me, teaching is just expressing my passion to younger actors coming up. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I guess my, my secret is just to love what you teach. I'm a terrible teacher. People ask me to all the time. And I, because I want to act, I don't want to teach. I want to act. So when someone's doing something bad, I'm a, just a horrible teacher because I'm thinking, oh, don't do it like that. Just let me do it. Let me just do it. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Hi. My question is for Gray. Finally. I felt like I was moderating Matthew's panel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi. What is the most interesting thing you've had to learn to do for a role? Oh my goodness, kiss a lot of ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, oh gosh. Sometimes I'll have to learn an accent like right away and it ends up being terrible and people complain about it online for 10 years and I'm like, I'm sorry they threw it at me at the last minute. Like when I played Sheena Easton's sister in one of, you were, was that, were you in that? Maybe it was still Casey. Anyway, before Matt came on board, it was Casey Kasem, and um, I, they just, the person who was gonna play Sheena Easton's sister just kind of dropped out at the last minute, and so they were like, you can do it, just do a Scottish accent. And I was like, okay, and it was just terrible. I think I was thinking, I was like, Scottish, okay, uh, Braveheart. I'm like, hold, you know, and I'm like, okay, I don't know. And then I, I think I slipped into like Lucky Charms or something, I was like, Lucky, blue diamonds. I mean, it was just terrible, so I hope. You can go all go look that up on the internet. <laughs> it was like Scooby doing the Loch Ness Monster or something, and I have to play Sheena as Easton sister, and it's just an atrocity to the Scottish accent. <laughs> Isn't she Easton from like Cuba? No, she's Scottish. Oh, she is. Yeah. Um, have, do you guys know that Gray does like a ton of voices? Yeah. Don't you want to hear a couple of them? Though? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, there's Vicky from the Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> Twerps, go to bed! And then I play Azula from Avatar, The Last Airbender. Yes, a very mean sister. Yes, I cut my bangs off, just like I do now, with my kitchen scissors. Um, and I, I... I play little old ladies on, uh, in, in, on scooters who can hardly get around on the Loud House. I play scoots. And I also play Lola on the Loud House, and Lana on the Loud House. 
and Cheryl on the Loud House. She works in the office. And Mrs. Bernardo on the Loud House. She's the acting teacher. She's like Matthew Lillard. Um, and I, oh gosh, Sam on Danny Phantom. And, um, and Star vs. the Forces of Evil. I played Queen Moon Butterfly, and I love playing that role. And I also played Raz on Sheila. Anybody watch Sheila? Oh, yes, Sheila. I love you have a movie, you have a Pixar movie coming out. Uh, oh my god, you guys! <laughs> it's the biggest thing ever! I know! I'm so excited, man. I'm just dorked out on my own self. Last night I was walking down the strip by myself, and then I saw this big ad for Onward, which and I, and I actually have a real part in a real big movie, because usually people are like, oh, you did great as a scratch. So we're going to give this to um, some celebrity. Sorry. He's a celebrity, so I kind of hate him, but I also love him. <laughs> Um, it's almost like what happened to us with Scoop. Um, anyway, <laughs> but they'll take the part and give it to some celebrity, so I was sure they were going to do that. But I got a real partner. Her name is Dewdrop. She's in Onward. She plays this like motorcycle gang. She's a motorcycle pixie. And um, she throws plush toys. I'm a, a McDonald's her, Happy Meal. Like? She, well, she kind of sounds a little bit like Vicky, sorry. Um, but, but, but she's really tiny like this. And she's like, hey, get out of my way. You know, she's kind of like tough like that. A little bit cute, but you know, yeah. She's so incredible. Cute. She's incredible. Yeah. Um, the funny thing about voiceovers is there's like eight people that take all the jobs, <laughs> and Gray is one of them. Yes. Oh, this way. Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Hi. Sorry. Hi, so great. Uh, even though I love you as Azula. Yes, well, you should. For Matthew. <laughs> uh, I'll so banish you later. So, uh, my best friend and I are from Salt Lake. Right on. And, uh, so are they. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to ask what your favorite and least favorite part of filming SLC Punk was. Because yeah. we came in the photo op as SLC Punk. Yeah, and we were just that. really excited to be a part of that with you and that you were here for that. And so I wanted to hear a little bit that more. That movie was made before you were born. <laughs> um, so I was in a little tiny movie called SLC Punk that opened up. I just love it every time I say something, they cheer. Um, that opened up the uh, Sundance Film Festival 20 years ago. Um, and I play this punk rock sort of kid. And I think the, look, the best thing about making that movie is that I was number one on the call sheet and I gotta say all the lines. Where'd she go? I, ne I always play Freddie Prince Jr.'s best friend. So I never get that job. So it was nice to be the guy. Um, but look, there's no doubt that the best thing about that movie is the legacy of that movie. For moments like that, for how it's connected to people over generations, that's the best part of that movie. Cause I, and it's also like, we talked, I talked yesterday, was everyone here yesterday, is, is here today? Okay. So yes, I don't have many more things to tell you. I might be out of stories. Um, but you know those moments we were talking about how like, Wes Craven gave me something to hold me to get to the next sort of junction of work in my life. SLC Punk is one of those movies that I look back on in my life and go, there was a moment where I, I, I always believe that you have to try to be incredible at what you do. And you may not always be brilliant, you may not always be incredible, but it's the act of striving towards something. If you miss it, that's fine, because generally you'll end up pretty great. And that was a movie where I was trying to be an incredible actor. And there's moments in that movie that I'm super proud of. There's a, um, in the movie, I break down hysterically sobbing when my best friend dies. Uh, so Harold and Bob dies in the movie. And I, they did the first take before lunch. And as, as they went to do the take, I had nothing going on. There was no emotional reality whatsoever. And I faked cried and it was terrible. So I sat in this room during lunch the director said, we're going to come back and we're going to start with a scene, be ready to go. Because he was like, oh, you're obviously nothing's happening. So I sat in this room during lunch and I just had this unbelievable conversation with my dad in my imagination, who's still alive. And I ended up sobbing for like 20 minutes. And then they came back from lunch and we did the scene. 
And I did that scene, and that scene, we ran a thousand foot mag, and I cried the whole time, and it was in one take, and it's sort of like, if I watch it now, it's like one of the most proud moments I've ever had as an actor. So, for that movie, um, that's the moment that stands out to me. So thank you for asking. I, uh, you know, Murray, my, my ex-husband, he was an ex-punk rocker, a great guy, great guy. The one, some one of my husband's was really great. Um, but he, 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 when he met Matt, he was like, oh God, yeah, I, I know who that guy is. He's like, SLC smelt punk because he had like put out punk zines and everything. He said, that was the best performance and the best capturing of, of a, of, of, he's like, I felt like it was one of my friends from that time in my life. It was, he was just completely captured it. And I have to say, you know, sometimes when you meet a celebrity, you get like tongue tied and you can't talk and you say something really stupid that you beat yourself up for for like 10 years. Well, the first time I met Matt, we were in the, a theater company together, but he was already famous. It was like post scream and everything. It was the one, we were in a theater company with Neve Campbell. Nev? Nev. Nev Campbell. Um, and see, I'm already still being a dork. But anyway, he was in the play and he was so good. And afterward, I was like, I'm going to say something amazing to him. Like, I just want to have a moment with him. And I just literally was like, who's so was good? And I, I was like, what did you even, you didn't make words. And then you were just like, yeah, oh, cool. You were nice, but you were sort of a little bit like, what's going on there? And so then I hated myself for 10 years. Like, every day I would think about it probably at least one time. And then so when he became shaggy, I was like, oh my God. Oh, no, I, like as if he would remember who, the girl who couldn't talk. But anyway, I had to geek out. I think about it all the time. You see how far away from her I am on stage. I never get too close to Gray. Every time I think that somebody, I, I, I call myself going, nobody thinks about that Gray, and then somebody will say, remember that time that you said that dumb thing? Anyway, okay. Why are you guys in line? Who are you? What are you doing over in line? Oh, and here I am telling these long stories. Nice. Oh, autographs, good. Okay. Nice. Hi. The boys are coming tomorrow. Who's excited? I am so excited. Misha Collins is here today. Remember how I said he was just the hot dad at my kid's school? Does anybody remember that? I said that yesterday. Yeah, and he totally remembered me. He came into the green room and he was like, it's been forever. And he gave me a big hug and I was like, the hot dad at school remembers me. Kathy Kinney, please come to the tech table. You're in trouble. All right, next question. Hi, Gray and Matt. Uh, Mike from Montreal. Um, my first uh, Supernatural con, so yeah, me thank you too. for coming here. It's crazy, <laughs> right? It's crazy night. So um, it, it's very similar to uh, the last person. I watched SLC Punk uh, a while ago, and you know, like Keanu Reeves, who got River's Edge, and, and River Phoenix, who got uh, uh, My Own Private Idaho, you know, you guys have done movies that are really visceral in your you know, in, in your budding career. And, and Gray, I'm sure you've had stuff where you were starting out as well. Did you guys ever imbue a character where it was so visceral that you felt changed afterwards where your personality has been different or something just awoke in you where you're like, oh, this is who I am now? God, I can't wait for that to happen. <laughs> and then, I mean, I think that when you have characters that spark energy in you, but you don't ch I mean, look, my whole thing is like, if I can bring me to a character, I like doing different things. I like creating something that's outside of the norm for me. Like, I like making big choices. So, Scooby-Doo is an example. Like, trying to take a two-dimensional character and make him into a real person was complicated. Um, but I don't think a character, and then you're putting yourself in that character, like how you'd respond um, is the work that I'm proud of, but I don't think anything's ever really like changed my life. Does that make, uh, it's just not, I mean, on stage, I've had moments like that where you're on stage, you're like, this is fire, but I've never had like, a now, now I'm a different person. It's a job. It's a really weird job, but it is a job. Like, I don't think a, a lawyer's like, I'm different. Oh, well, maybe they are. I could just be shallow too. <laughs> I, I almost quit. I mean, I wanted to be an actress from the time I was a really little girl. I had a sort of difficult upbringing and my mom wasn't there for me much because she had some substance problems and my grandma raised me and she worked at a factory and I didn't really feel supported in my art for my, I just felt like I was fighting my whole way to be an artist and be an actress. And I uh, got it, I finally, I had a teacher who I adored who really believed in me and drove me up to this audition where they are only taking 30 people out of like 1,500 people and to go to this uh, theater school, P PCPA Theater Fest. And um, it was very low tuition, so I thought if I clean houses, 
on weekend, you know, if I clean houses, I can pay the tuition and like live, you know, and I, I just didn't have like any, my teacher then got cancer and died like right before that. And so I just felt like really defeated, defeated, defeated. And then I got to the audition and we were doing this acting exercise where we were running all around the room and this guy like ran into me and just knocked my two front teeth back into the middle of, and I really felt like, okay, <laughs> am I not supposed to do this? Like, am I fighting? I felt like somebody was singing out street and the song that I had to sing because I had to do a monologue and sing a song, but they, they sent me into surgery for my teeth in the middle of the day of the audition. And they were gonna put me under, uh, under. and I was like, no, don't, because I have to go back and sing my song. And then I realized the song that I picked was it called Sister from the Color Purple, you know that song? Um, that's a fun song to sing with no two front teeth. You know, and I was like, sister, you've been on my mind, oh sister, with two of a kind so sister, I'm keeping my eyes on you. I bet you think you don't know nothing but singing the blues, oh, but sister, have I got news for you, I'm something, I hope you think that you're something too, but everything will sound like sister, <laughs> and I really just almost quit, but they let me into school, and I honestly don't think it was because I was good, I think it was because they felt sorry and they were afraid I was going to sue them for my teeth. <laughs> But I got in, and I. But it, there was a moment where I could have just taken a, di a, wrong, a, a different turn and just been. I don't know what I would have done because I can't do anything but this. <laughs> Honestly, even when I worked at Olive Garden, I talked too much. Like I used to be just the door lady because I couldn't wait tables and I wasn't good at this and I wasn't good at that. And they said, just open the door and smile. That's all. You're good at that. So I did that. But then I was too chatty with the people in the lobby. And I, I can't I, imagine. I got in trouble. <laughs> I cannot imagine. <laughs> anyway, so. But I just, but just, uh, yeah, I could have, I mean, I don't know if it was a role that changed me, but it was a decision to just, I'm just going to keep going at this no matter what happens to try to distract me, I'm going to keep going, so. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Uh, so, Scooby Doo played a big role in my childhood, so this is a very cool and big moment for me. Keepers, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question is over the years working together, if there's any memories or fun moments that stand out uh, between the two of you guys? Matthew reminds me to say my lines because sometimes I'm on my phone and I forget to say my lines, and Matthew hits my leg to remind me that it's my turn. Because sometimes there's like really long parts that I'm not in, so I think, oh, what's going on on Facebook? And then he hits me, and then I do my line. And sometimes it's, he forgets. It's every it. line, just so that we're clear. <laughs> I have one job. Sometimes he misses his lines because he's too concerned about hitting me for my lines. And then sometimes he forgets to hit my leg, and I legitimately get angry with him for not reminding me. To not do reminding it. her to put her phone down. Um, I will say this: I met um, I met Casey Kasem once, and so he played my dad in um, Mystery Incorporated, which is a great show. If you've never seen it; it's on Netflix, I think. Um, but that is we did it for two seasons. It's an ongoing show. The art's incredible, um, and he played my dad in that. And so I met him one day working, and you know to be somebody that's holding you know holding to be the next in line of an icon like that was a big deal for me so that was awesome i didn't know i was going to keep doing the role of daphne because i did the first see i did a season of it after i after i was the how new many daphne. seasons have you done it well, it's been 22 years yeah i know it's crazy i cannot believe that it's crazy jeepers who didn't know and, and i'm supposed to be a fashion icon but i'm wearing the same dress anyway um but when I met Casey, we ra were wrapping the season, and I didn't know if I would still be Daphne on the next season, because I thought, I hope they liked me. But there was, does anybody remember that rant that Casey Kasem did? It went viral online where he's yelling at the thing. He's like, that little dog named Snuggles, and he's like cussing and everything. Did anybody remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I had to ask him about it. I really wanted to ask him about it. And I, <laughs> Frank Welker, the guy who plays Fred, was just like, Gray, we couldn't believe it. Because we were like, and we were at the cast party, and I was thinking, this is your chance, Gray. So there was a little lull in the conversation, and I was like, that secret tape of you that you were just like, you know, and everybody said their buttholes just clamped up. You know, like, Gray, are you serious? You know, I mean, he, he was so nice about it. He's like, oh my God, yeah, I couldn't believe that that guy, you know, sold that audio. I almost sued him. He's like, but, you know, it would have been a big long lawsuit, not already, you know. Anyway, but I, 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 I say the things that people are afraid to say because I have. Gray like is a, also very dirty and blue. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what he said. And about Casey me. was like super sweet, innocent old man, and there she is, like, <laughs> being nasty. One time he goes, 
like, you know, you know, you just, you, wear, you come in here wearing these pretty dresses and these high heels, and but every other word's pussy. <laughs> I, uh, so to do my voice, I have like a little catchphrase. So, uh, you know, I've done it forever now, and I used to, so when I first auditioned for the part of Shaggy, it was from, I was doing 13 Ghosts. It's my favorite part of doing these Q&As. And I flew down to audition for Scooby-Doo and then I fly back up. But I didn't do an impression of Shaggy. It's not like I walked around and did an impression of Shaggy. So I would scream myself hoarse so that I would talk like this. Like, dude, Scooby. Like, that's how I auditioned. They couldn't hear me. They're like, what? I can't hear you. Um, method, and, method, asshole. So I flew down, I flew down <laughs> and I drove to the audition. And I sat in my car, it was, it was like a Saturday morning, it was like 9 a.m. And I sat in my car and I'm screaming, ah! in my car. And the producer walked up and knocked on the window. <laughs> you okay? I know this story. So what do you got? True story, you okay? I'm like, yeah, you're yeah, okay, zoinks. <laughs> I'll see you inside. Um, and I was the first one they saw and I got the job. But my, um, and then every day, we shot the first movie in Australia, and every day, because you have the wrong side of the, um, it was six right months side, shoot. It's the right side. It's the right side of the, free, the highway, so you had a driver every day. So every day on the way in, I had them spliced together nothing but Casey's lines as Shaggy for like seven episodes. So for an entire six months, every day, whether I liked it or not, I had to listen to it going to work. So now to get ready for, the, for work here, and we do the show once or twice a week. I mean, we do it a lot. But I, um, this is how I warm up. I'm Casey Kasem. I'm America's top four. <laughs> and then I, would, then I go into the Scooby-Doo show. Like, dude, Scoob, Scoob, Scooby-Doo. Man, Scoob. <laughs> <laughs> So that is, that's how I do the every day. That's how I warm up every day. So, God bless you, kids. Thank you for the question. I know that there was probably a tabloid story like Matt Miller rage screaming in his car in the parking lot. Ah! <laughs> He's got angry I issues. hate Gray! I hate Gray! Yes. Hi, my name is Eric. I'm a big fan of both of yours. Thank you. So my question was, what are some funny stories like Gray with uh, being on Avatar as Azula and Matthew in Without a Paddle? Woo. Oh, what funny stories from those? Yeah. Uh, I was excited to be working with Rufio. <laughs> when I was playing Azula, I was a little bit starstruck by Dante until I found out what an idiot he was. Now I'm not starstruck at all, but I remember being like, I want a show with Rufio. <laughs> Who's Rubio? Rufio? Rufio, it's Dante Bosco. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> we, do, we, do, we do cons together all the time now as sister and brother, so we're... But it's funny because he only does like that voice, like that's his voice. So sometimes people go, do some voices. And he's like, well, I do, you know, uh, Zuko and uh, I do the, uh, I also do uh, the Azuka. guy on the Dragon Prince. And then I also do like uh, Last Ninja or whatever he does the same one. It's great. I love it. But it's a great voice. So he made a whole career out of it. But I tease him. I tease him much like I tease Matthew who. Um, I can do one voice. <laughs> I can only they, do Shaggy. That's they all They try I can to do. give him like cops and stuff like that. There's one cop that does cop. sound okay. He does like a Chicago the accent. Chicago cop, that's it. That's my only two voices. Yeah, but if they try to give him any other part, I'm like, oh, that's Shaggy as the mailman. That's a good... <laughs> I'm not crazy enough to be that good. Um, I am. I have a funny story. So we were doing uh, Without a Paddle, and there's a sequence in the movie um, where there, uh, there's a bear. And he says, you know, I don't have to outrun the bear, I just have to outrun you. And so in this sequence, so just so you know, there's no trained bears in, we shot in New Zealand. So there's no trained bears in New Zealand. So they had to get a bear from California to New Zealand. But you have to fly, you can only fly a bear for like three hours. Or else you have to put, like, the, the, the bear has a union, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what... <laughs> better than ours. So they have to fly, so they had to make like six stops for the bear to get to New Zealand. So the bear, just so everyone knows, the bear's reward when you're working with a bear is coffee and whipped cream. It's just like me. I could be in the bear union. You are a bear. 
So you're working with a bear that's jacked up on sugar and caffeine. <laughs> It's not a great feeling. And so what happened is that they put down, so in the sequence of the bear, they put down like a little line, right? This little wire that goes below sort of eye line. And it's really, it's really close to the ground. The bear sees it. But it's this tiny thing that's the only thing standing between you and a bear eating you. So when a bear is working, as you can imagine, like there's all kinds of safety precautions in the bear. And there's like a team of like four people that are working and protecting the bear. There's a guy with a tranquilizer gun. There's an old guy who wrestles the bear. Have you ever seen that bear documentary with Brad Pitt? He's like this old guy, oh, Bart is the name of the bear. Oh, Bart, and he'll get in and wrestle and the bear will beat the shit out of this 76 year old man. Oh, Bart, you're hurting me. So, in this sequence, set us, uh, Dax and I are here, and the bear is supposed to walk across the front in, in the foreground, holding Seth in his mouth. <laughs> and so you guys are the camera, the bear is the speaker, and Dax and I are back here, right? And the only thing standing between us is the little line. So they get everyone together, like, whatever you do, boys, whatever happens, don't look the bear in the eyes. <laughs> whatever happens, don't panic. Don't panic, don't look in the eyes. Okay, yeah, we got it, we got it, we got it. And we're all very like, this is like a big, you're making a big deal out of nothing. The bear's gonna be great, whatever. The bear Murray, Carrie. So like you can't be on your mental, I mean, there, there's like a lot of rules. So anyway, so we are, we're back here, we're in our underwear, doesn't feel great. <laughs> Not happy about that. And everyone is now watching the bear because the bear is out. So they open the thing with the bear, the bear comes out, oh, Bart, and they start giving him coffee, and they start giving him whipped cream, and they're like, okay, Bart, and there's like another guy over here with whipped cream and coffee, and so, ready, and boys, ready, and action. Come on, Bart, Bart, come on, and the, bar, the bear starts moving, right? And he gets right in front of Dax and I, and the bear starts sniffing, and starts growling, and starts, and the guy on the tranquilizer is like, Bart, no, Bart, no! And the old guy's like, Bart, Bart, no, Bart, no! And we're like, don't look at the fucking bear! And the bear turns and looks right at us. We can't run and we're in underwear. And you can't look at it about to eat your best friend. And the guy on the tranquilizer gun is like, should I shoot? Should I shoot? It was so not funny. <laughs> That's the end of the story. We made it. Ended up getting distracted by the coffee and made it all the way across. That's my funny story. <laughs> True story. I've never done a panel together, just the two of us. We'll never do it another way. Here you go. <laughs> Hi, my question is for Gray. Um, so, you've recently taken over the role of Martin Prince on Simpsons? Yeah, I don't want to help Bart's baby! What is that like, having to come into this family after 30 friggin' years? Well, I'm a little bit of a dork about it, because I came onto the set and I started taking pictures of all the murals, and I took a picture of my name on the sign-in sheet. I literally was like a con, I, I, I was like, I was such a fan of the show that I was like, I felt like I was at a Comic Con. I was like, oh, there's the building, okay, here's me in front of the building, oh my god, here's the sign in sheet. And I'm just like so honored to be doing that. But it was bittersweet as well because I loved the woman who played Martin Prince. And, um, Rosie Taylor was a really dear friend of mine. She passed away and um, she, she, you know, she was not like 30 years old, but still she was, she had a lot of life left in her, but she was the voice of Minnie Mouse and her husband was the voice of Mickey Mouse and they were dear friends of ours, I, I, my Murray and I, my, my nice husband. We used to go and have dinner with them and everything, they were such a great couple and when he passed away, she was just so heartbroken. So the only comfort I had in that was that Lucy was reunited with Wayne because we're just such a great couple and um, and I, I hope that she thinks I'm doing a good job, but it is a huge dream and I just can't, I think they made one of those Simpsons posters, you know, they do for the different episodes, and I just see my name on it. I, I took a screenshot of it, then I circled my name with my little editing thing on my iPhone and sent it to all my friends. <laughs> I also play Sherry and Terry! Yeah! Those weird twins. <laughs> yeah! She's, she's so weird. <laughs> she's just so weird.
weird, and I love every second of it. <laughs> Thank you. Please don't ask her any more questions. Just, just encouraging me. Alright, sorry. I was kidding. Everyone knows I was kidding. <laughs> I'm empty inside, please. I'm yes. wondering, what's the best and the worst thing about working with each other? I pretend to hate him all the time, but I love him so much. Every time he's not there, I'm like, this is going so much faster without Matthew, right? I feel like he kind of slows us down. <laughs> all those redirects, ugh. <laughs> Gray has not been on time since 1994. <laughs> it's so true. My very first big part was the, the rug, rug rats. I, 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 but I got in a car accident on the way Don't to believe rug that rats. shit. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. A single word she says. She'll send you pictures of traffic and it'll be like a bright shiny day and it's like, oh it's funny, it's raining. You can't use the picture multiple times. She is. I'm not kidding. We went to get picked up yesterday for the con and the woman who's the driver, she's like, yeah, we're just waiting for this gray Delisle. I'm like, oh my god. It I, follows me. They said the lobby. I was in the lobby she was. with my coffee. She was. Okay. That's the worst. No, but I did have a car accident on the way to my first job. Don't believe it. <laughs> and this guy picked me up and, he, and I was like, I, you have to get me to the Klasky Shupo. I got this part. And he was like, what about your car? I was like, I'll just have to deal with that later. I got to deal with that later. I've been trying to do voiceover my whole life. Hi, Daddy. Um, but I, I was like, I've been trying to do voiceovers and it, it can never break in. And, anyway, I got ADD in case anybody... Ever... Really? So weird. I think there's a poster with you on it somewhere. ADD and you. I found out I had ADD because my son had it and I was filling out the questionnaire about him. Like, do you lose your, does he lose things all the time? I was like, oh, I do too. And I was like, does he, you know, does he play the world's against him sometimes? Like, yeah. You know, it's just like, oops. Does, does he ever like, I, do, can he not sit still? Oh my God, it's just terrible. I'm always doing things in my house. I can't even watch a show without doing something else. Like I have to be folding laundry or. Shh. <laughs> she's okay, she's all right guys, she's all right. Go, go visit her at the table, I dare you. <laughs> Oh my god! Um, you know what's actually one of the great things about our job is that we work with a man named Frank Welker. And Frank, yes! The, the four of you love him. Uh, so Frank Welker is the original voice of Fred. He's 98 years old. <laughs> he's not. He's not. He's like, is he 70? I don't know. He looks great, whatever he is. Um, <laughs> there's so many things I just cut out of my... <laughs> out of my mouth, which is so much better. Um, but he also plays the voice of Scooby-Doo. So he plays Scooby and Fred. So you, if he gets in a scene with Scooby and Fred, he goes back and forth. It's the greatest thing in the world to watch. He was Spike in Gremlins, like he was the mean gremlin. He was Apu in... He plays Apu, he plays... Um, uh, he was, yeah, Apu in Aladdin. Is that Aladdin? Yeah, Aladdin. And, um, he plays that uh, Papa Smurf. Yes, he was also like uh, Dino. He was like he, he did a lot of the Flintstones. Yeah, he did Flintstones. Stuff. Yeah. Like, um, he's Barney. He's actually above Blue Tom Falcon. Cruise on the few, few IMDb people have more credits. Like he was above like Tom Cruise and all these people for like more large, gross, highest grossing film. He's a uh, Megatron on uh, oh, yeah. Terminator. Uh, Transformers. Uh, Transformers. I'm RC. I'm RC. He's the best. <laughs> he's the best. That's the best part. What side of that? People do often ask me if I was the original Daphne, and I'm like, ow, ow, I'm, I'm going to be okay, it's going to be fine. <laughs> anyway. Yes, next question. Oh, this side. Oh, sorry. Hi, sorry. Um, hi, Matthew. Hi. Um, last night I had posted on that I was, I had waited in line for your autograph, and then we had to wait, you know, until later, because it ran long. Uh -huh. And I was... Not today. You can't just walk right up. <laughs> We could, if it wasn't for the virus, we could slow dance as long as you want. <laughs> anyway, my nephew had commented that um, you were big into Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. And that you have a company, and I just wanted to hear a little bit more about that. Yes. Um, so I talked about it a little yesterday, but basically what happened is that I, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons when I was a young kid, like 10, 11, 12. And then I realized that there were women, girls in the world, and so I stopped doing that stupid shit. <laughs> And then about the, uh, I was 21 years old, I 
moved in with a roommate in New York, and he brought with him to acting school in New York all his D&D books. And I'm like, dude, you play D&D? He's like, yeah, I love D&D, we should play. He's like, okay. So about three months later, two of my other best friends and I and him, after the Super Bowl, played a game of D&D in the, um, the basement of 50th and Broadway. Where are you going? Why are you stealing that poster? <laughs> You dirty rat. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> I told her. Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of telling the worst story ever. Could you please stop? So this is how I play D&D. &D. No, so we started playing in, uh, at 15th and Broadway. We played from like 12 o'clock to like 6 in the morning. And then those same guys and I have played since we were 22 years old. So our longest campaign was seven years. I, you know, I played Valchon Dumier, the ranger. See, I can do a French accent. <laughs> um, Who knew Shaggy I don't want to look French. back there and see what French she's doing. Now? Oh my god! Um, uh, so we, yeah, so then we're all having a midlife crisis. Um, I just turned 50, like my life's over. So I was like, what are we gonna do? And so we started this company two and a half years ago. Basically what we do is we create high-end boxed editions of Dungeons and Dragons releases. So if you love Pearl Jam, like the ultra fan will buy a Pearl Jam box set of a, a LP or vinyl. And so we are that for Dungeons and Dragons. And I love it. It's the best. I literally, I'm creative. I'm using different parts of my brain. Like I'm responsible for international sh shipping and insurance. I mean, that's the worst decision a business has ever made. <laughs> But we're still making it, so it's good. It's the best time ever. And it's the best game. If you're not playing Dungeons and Dragons, you should. It's the greatest game in the world. It's, the, it's like, it's for six years in a row, the game has expanded. Critical Role has changed the entire dynamic of what it is to be a gamer in the RPG space. And, and you, have you guessed it on that yet? You should. No, I haven't. Not yet. I know. I know Sam really well. Oh, you do? I love Sam. Yeah. Sam. Oh. yeah. But thank you for asking. <laughs> do you play? Roll a dish. <laughs> yes. Hi, my question is for Greg. Um, I'm out. <laughs> you've seen what's happening, right? Well, I mean, you've seen what's happening. Him. Hey, he, he does these giant monologues and he doesn't get a sad hug. How much of your voices are your creation and how much of it is direction? Oh, gosh. I, it's all... I, well, I mean, they, the animators have a lot to do with it. Because those... <laughs> I'm just, honestly, this is... We could be here all day. <laughs> They'll show you a picture of a character, and so it might be, it, maybe it's a witch. It just sounds a little bit like that. And she's got a snaggle tooth, so then you gotta do a kind of a snaggly tooth kind of thing. <laughs> you know, you just, you just kind of go off the picture. Like, so if she didn't have that tooth, I mean, maybe she was a little bit younger, and she was a little bit cuter, and oh, you know, you know, just if she was tiny. This is your fault. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's a real mix between the, what the animators create and then I just kind of try to bring it off the page as much as I can. Um, sometimes like there'll be a like a little like a kind of like a skate kid or whatever if he's like older or like kind of lanky or whatever. But then they're like, can you be a little chubbier? So then I'm like, yeah, I guess you could because if you're a little bit chubbier, you have a little bit more trouble breathing a little bit because you're like carrying around a little extra weight, you know? So, uh, yeah. Like that. <laughs> Alright, who right, is it? I'm coming to find a question. You're going to be like the, the Montel Williams of this con. I'm Someone's going to re wrestle that mic out of your hands. Don't give them the mic. Never give them the mic because they won't give it back. Who are you texting? I've learned that. I'm right friend. here. <laughs> who are you texting? What the hell are you doing? You tell your sister and she blew it. <laughs> What's your question? What's your name? My name is Paul. It's a real handsome name. Uh, you have no questions. Why are you here? You're a dude. He didn't get you're in line. You're not allowed here. <laughs> He's not in line, Matthew. You're, you're, you're disrespecting people who waited. Sorry. <laughs> Paul, I love you. We're like brothers. Thank you, Matt. I wish I could hug you right now. I don't care about that damn virus. <laughs> Dry cough you had, Matthew. Is 
like, oh! <laughs> that's not funny. I know, I'm sorry. Alright, does anyone have a, a virus question? <laughs> what you got? I see you with a big beard. <laughs> it's never good when you approach a guy and he's like, oh shit! <laughs> Here comes Matthew! Look at my butt, I have no ass. I have no... And the, you know the weirdest part is? I have the... I have the... Stop. There's no ass. Don't encourage him. I have the... I have no butt and a long crack. <laughs> like, I will be... I'll be... I coach my kid's soccer team, but I'll be coaching, and he'll run across the field like, Dad! Your pants! <laughs> All right, what's your question? I want to hear something about hackers. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, I just, I just nagged my first answer, which is about Angelina Jolie, which I would love to tell you, but I don't know your name. And that's the kind of thing you get in trouble for. Um, what is that? What can I tell you about that movie? Uh, I can take. How about having a little shout out for the people who are signing up for it? You guys are awesome. Super Califragilistic XB Audacious. I don't know why I just got a kick out of that. <laughs> I was gonna tell, oh, Angelina Jolie. I just thought about how uninteresting I must be to a deaf person because they're like, who the hell is that girl? I don't know her from movies and I can't oh, hear what she funny. sounds like, so whatever. Yeah, maybe you should <laughs> Sorry. <leave. laughs> oh, no. You, she is a bitch. <laughs> oh, me. Yes, they kidding. love to hate me, Matthew. Um, so I'm sorry, so Angelina Jolie and Johnny Lee Miller were dating during Hackers, you know, they were married. And Angelina Jolie, everyone knows who that is. Johnny Lee Miller was on Elementary. It's gorgeous. On CBS, beautiful. And the two of them were so beautiful. And the two of them were awesome. So they both went to Amsterdam. We were shot in London. We shot three weeks in New York, and the rest of the time was in London. And when we were in London, they went one weekend to Amsterdam, and they both came back with tattoos. <laughs> They both went back to Amsterdam four consecutive weekends and got more tattoos every time. So they would come back, and I was, I'm like five, six, seven years old, 10, 15, 20 years older than them. And I would look at them and be like, I don't think you should get any more. <laughs> it's in a row. You keep going and you keep getting more. Not a great idea. I mean, they both turned out okay. My son wants to get a tattoo on his face, and I was like, uh... I said, what did you like five years ago, Tex? And he was like, I don't know, Minecraft? I was like, what if you had like a Minecraft tattoo on your face? Would that be good? And he was like, Minecraft's still kind of cool. I was like, okay, well darn it, not a good example then. Why does your 13 year old want a tattoo on his face? Because he wants to force himself to keep being an artist. He doesn't want to be hireable because he feels like he'll give up on his art dream if he's ever hireable. He should totally do it. <laughs> I think you should say, Mom, <laughs> fault. <laughs> yes, sorry. He's a really good artist. Yeah. Oh, we're over here, sorry. These sorry. are the longest Q&As ever. Also, I'm never gonna sit down, here down here again. Three days. I sat down yesterday and there are all these pictures of me online just with this like, because <laughs> I had Spanx on trying to look good. And then of course it looks like I've got like eight boobs because they're all like, <laughs> and then somebody's like, oh, Grace talking about how hot Misha Collins is. And I'm like, oh God, and I've got eight boobs. It's, <laughs> it's all over Twitter. <laughs> scared the shit out of me. I hate it when they play us off. Don't. All right. Once the eight boobs come up, you get played off. <laughs> I heard eight boobs and I don't understand the eight boobs. I have Spanx on. I only look like I have one. Under Armour's different, Matthew. All right. um, you look amazing. Both of you.
that in a like it feels like a Weezer song, right? Um, all right, everybody. Um, what's happening now? We're told is a stage reset. So they're going to just wipe all this off and put something else on. I don't know what it, I don't know what that is.